Welcome to Gen Z Up to the Ballot, the podcast. I'm your host, Shane Scalfaro. Today, we're going to be talking about Gen Z and their part in the upcoming election. Now, before I bring on my two guests, I want to read off some stats about the amount of Gen Z voters in this election. Now, according to a study by Circle at Tufts University, there are about 8 million potential new voters in this election since the 2022 midterms. And since those 20, in those 2022 midterms, excuse me, Gen Z had a higher voter turnout than both Gen X and Millennials. And the number of potential Gen Z voters in the upcoming election, which are the ages between 18 and 27 in 2024, is about 40.8 million. So now that there are some background information, I want to introduce my guest. I'm joined by Gen Z Up to the Ballot special reporters, Sullivan Beach and Reese Thompson. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for having us. Yep. Thanks for having us, Shane. So I want to get right into those stats that I just kind of read off, and I want to hear your kind of first impressions and why you think those are important. Reese, you want to go first? Absolutely. So picking off back of what you said, um, The Circle says 41 million members of Gen Z will be able to vote, including 8 million young people who turned 18 six, since the 2022 election. So obviously in the past recent years, we've seen a bigger and bigger number of younger generations taking part in holding the uh, electoral torch in um collaborating with older generations who have typically had that for a really long time. So um, my first reaction is that Gen Z can make a very big impact on this election in one way or another. Okay, so for me, I think it's going to be a really surprising impact because in 2020, you um, a lot of Gen Z, they couldn't vote like a lot of people like me were 17 years old who really wanted to vote in the election. And we just weren't able to because we were off by a year being able to vote. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see, um, like circletufts.edu says, the 8 million new Gen Zers being allowed to vote, contributing, contributing to that 41 million um, people number being able to vote. But um, one thing I have that's going to contribute to the surprising number of people being allowed to vote is that the New York Times says that 95% of the people that were contacted for polling was through the phone. And I don't know if you guys ever hear your phone ring or you see a number on there that you don't really want to answer. Most of the time, you're not really going to want to answer that number because you're going to be working. Most college kids are working. You're going to be in class. You're just not going to have the time to pick up that phone and really answer for who you're voting for. And I think the majority of the people answering those calls could be older people. So I think that we're going to be a, see a big surprising turnout in one candidate or the other candidate in the next coming months. Yeah, and I mean, that's a big part of it nowadays than, you know, way back in the day when there's, you know, there's phones now so we can do this outreach. But I mean, how are we seeing kind of an, a bigger outreach and a bigger push to kind of get people out to the polls? I think it's making Gen Z aware of how impactful their vote is because in past elections, we see people register according to um, The Hill and a bunch of other major news websites that have uh, done research on this that Gen Z is reached out about this, but it's a matter of if they literally show up to the polls or not on election day. Um, so that is the big push that a lot of um, campaigns are trying to do is reach out to voters to really make them realize that their vote does matter and not that, especially in battleground states. Like, for example, putting a name to a face like Josh Shapiro, who was um, supposed to be or he was one of the top candidates to be uh, Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate putting those big names to a face is something that they've been trying to do. So those key battleground states, including Arizona, Pennsylvania, all those other ones are the ones that they're really especially wanting to be touching this upcoming election. Yeah. And I just think that social media has a huge impact on like how people are going to be voting too, that we've never really seen before with Elon Musk buying Twitter and just how that's going to change like the frame of who's voting where and everything. And another thing to add to the cell phone, um, random digit dialing calls is that they started doing that in 2008. Um, and also 25% of those calls are actually still through landlines, which is kind of crazy. And only 75% are through cell phone calls. So I really think that we still need to see an adaptation to the new day and age of social media and technology that, not, that we're not really seeing yet. And I think that we're seeing both candidates trying to work their way through social media. Like Trump, you see him going on the Aiden Ross pod, like show podcast that a lot of young people watch. You see him going on these podcasts. You see Kamala trying to get out there with like Megan the Stallion on her show and all these like people that are going to appeal to young voters. And I think that they're trying to do that, but almost it seems in almost like a try hardy way that's not really reaching people in the most professional way. Yes, and that's a part of the whole, as MSNBC reported, that they're trying to 
use social media as a cultural messenger, as a way to resonate with Gen Z. And talking about that political or um, generational divide, you could say that I was talking about a little bit earlier. That is one of the reasons why they're trying to close that gap a little bit, is trying to talk through things that may be relatable. For example, we've seen Charlie XCX, um, you know, call Kamala Brat, and yeah. she posts that on X, and that went viral, and trying to kind of import memes in a sense of trying to in sense of making politics not as quote unquote serious but in a way to you know make it funny or relatable and kind of on a a softer note you could say um but then i saw a uh like a talking table with uh 12 news arizona did with all gen z voters half were democratic half were republican and that was actually brought up is how impactful is social media um, based on who you will vote for in this upcoming election. And a lot of them said that it really doesn't have too much of a stance based on um, celebrity endorsements or seeing those things because what they said is that they're starting to see through those lines a little bit and having to learn to make decisions for themselves and not have social media or these celebrities that are trying to persuade voters by saying endorsing one candidate or another to make that decision for them. Well, it does feel like now in the sense of you know, we mentioned it, 41 million new voters, like in this now Gen Z era, you can feel, it feels like a sense of urgency, like a sense that we've got to get these people on our side because now it feels like Gen Z is the absolute wild card in this whole thing. Well, any, any subgroup uh, is said that they are all influential and that they all are key parts in what will happen this November. Yeah, I think um, going off of all that, again, kind of going back to like the personality thing, you see Trump, he's such a polarizing figure. And obviously, I think in 2020, we would have seen an even bigger turnout for him just because he was kind of the first president that was really trying to like reach out to Gen Z and that like, and I don't even know if he was trying to do it because it seems like he kind of just gets on stage and he talks for three hours and he's making jokes. He's not really like how Obama and Romney were where they're going up there, they're shaking each other's hand. They're super professional, very articulate with how they speak. I think Trump does reach the younger people in that way, especially since our attention spans with social media and everything are so um, shortened. I think that Trump almost goes through so many points so fast that young people are, it's keeping them entertained. And that's why he's able to have these big rallies. And I think that Harris is kind of trying to do the same thing in her rallies, like make them longer and also picking Tim Waltz, who's kind of a funny guy and he can get out there. I think that was part of the reason why she did that, especially since he wasn't like as known of a figure as some of the other vice president candidates out there. So here's a good question. Do you think at you know, because you can start voting at 18. That's, you know, you're most people just graduated high school, maybe in their senior year of high school, something like that. Do you think that people in this day and age, when they're coming into being able to vote are as I'm trying to think of the word as educated as they should be when it comes to voting? Well, that's why I went and talked to the Athens nursing home, which is called Laurels. I went there last week and talked with a lot of seniors that lived in the local area, and I wanted to get their opinions. And from what I've gotten from them, obviously with any generation, they're a little bit skeptical seeing a new generation come in because people grow up with different experiences and different uh, life happenings that shape the way they want to vote or sway the way they want to vote but the one thing that they did resonate with the younger generation is that they will learn through experience their own experience and that's how they learned how to vote i when they were talking they remember the first time they can vote probably as vivid as i remember yesterday which honestly i don't even remember yesterday that well <laughs> but um that's something that they said is something that they trust the generation to learn on their own and that's something that as a fact of life and going through life, you learn everything on your own through your own experience. Yeah, and going off of uh, Reese, her story she got to do with kind of the older people and interviewing them, I got to go out to College Green and interview a few college students. And to be honest, most of them sounded really uncertain about really what they thought and who they wanted to vote for. And actually an article by CNN says that 19% of young voters less than 35 years of age are actually uncertain of who they want to vote for. And only 12% of voters over 35 say they are uncertain. So there's clearly a big divide there in that. And also going back to the polling thing with the phone calls, do we really know what Gen Z's thinking? And if they're not really sure if they even want to pick up their phone, because also you had Trump 
who spread this idea that there's all this fake news out there and the, the pollsters are wrong. And he constantly says the pollsters are wrong. So I feel like it makes Gen Z very uncertain as like as to what's even going on. And that's why make, that makes them such a wild card because a lot of people are kind of waiting on who they want to vote for or to decide who they want to vote for until the last second in November because they, you have everything, everything going on around the world right now changing. Like just now you had... Iran sent like 180 to 200 ballistic missiles towards Israel. This just happened about an hour ago. So this is something that's probably going to be talked about tonight in the vice presidential debate too. So if you have issues and wars like this going on that could turn people's heads like with the flip of a coin, it's going to be really interesting to see how that's going to sway voters in the coming months. Yeah, and they have to really learn about what policies that matters to them. So for example, a lot of Gen Z reportedly by the Hill, a lot of the ones that they really focus on is climate change, reproductive rights. Um, There's some along those lines in similar ways. And those really resonate with Kamala Harris, which is why she's done better in some of the polls. We had a recent um, Harvard Institute of Politics poll that came out and they gave a lot of statistical facts talking about how 74% of young Democrats say they will definitely vote compared to 60% of young Republicans. And um, a widening gender gap even, nearly doubling 17 points from the spring poll to 30 points now with Harris in a lead, 70% to 23% likely female voters. Yeah, and I like uh, how you bring up the polls. I actually want to go, looked at a couple of polls today myself. Um, as of today, New York Times has Trump at 50%, or at 46%, excuse me, Trump or Harris at 50%. I'm all out of numbers today. <laughs> <laughs> Just let's get on the same page. Harris 50%, Trump 46%. CNN had Harris at 48%, Trump at 47%. So still, you can see very close in themselves, very close together. Yes, it's very close, but we've seen this every year. And when you are polling, there are public polls and there are private polling. So depending on who they reach out to, because these are private companies um, who call the same people over and over again. That's how they get their polling done. Um, It's never going to be a true representation of election day when we see everybody vote. So this is an estimation yet in 2016, Hillary Clinton had the popular vote, but Donald Trump still won because of the electoral vote. So we have to keep those things in mind. Yeah, definitely keep that in mind. And also, I feel like that there's a lot of negativity going around with the candidates right now because CNN just said that 57% of young voters think that Trump's presidency was a disaster, which is interesting with the poll numbers he's getting. And also a whopping 67% of young voters say that Biden's was a failure. So you have both of these candidates that are really saying that they're the best choice for the country, where a lot of people just plain out don't think that they're the right fit, especially with all of the information going around and stuff. And also PewResearchCenter.com um, said in a recent article, quote, no one knows the profile of voters ahead of the election election day. We can't know for sure whether young people will turn out in greater numbers than usual or whether key racial or ethnic groups will do so. This means pollsters are left to make educated guesses about the turnout, often using a mix of historical data and current measure, measures of voting enthusiasm. And this is very different from routine opinion polls which mostly do not ask about people's future intentions. So this is going to be really interesting to see about about how all these issues with the wars going on and everything are going to turn people's ideas around. I honestly think that it's going to be really, really close in November, I think. Absolutely. Harvard Institute of Politics also said that Harris is outperforming Trump in personal qualities and issues, like I was talking about. For example, climate change, abortion, health care. But according to The Hill, the Trump campaign is using that to their advantage by focusing on economy and those types of issues and rallying young voters about trying to uh, make the the economy better and really care about the economy. So the Trump campaign sees this as more favorable to them than they did in the past. We've also seen President Trump uh, recently went to the Alabama versus Georgia game, and he had a lot of support that went viral on X. And we he was seen throwing um, chicken nuggets to college <laughs> students um, from the balconies. So a lot of ways to just show face and basically be present is something that is really going to rally supporters or what we have seen on social media go a little crazy and viral. 
And if you're just tuning in, this is Gen Z Up to the Ballot with host Shane Scalfaro alongside Reese Thompson and Sullivan Beach. Now, I want to go ahead and give a little timeline of just how some key events have played out. Um, according to the New York Times, July 21st is when Biden leaves the presidential race. At that point, Trump was up in polls. August 4th and 5th is about when polls started to tip towards Harris. And then an NPR uh, article where they did some research on this, political reporter Elena Moore, saying that younger voters are recalculating after Harris takes over. And then she said, quote, someone told me that they were refreshed, energized, and inspired, end quote. Now, why have we seen, you know, such a big shift once Biden decided to leave the race and Harris steps in? Why have we seen such a big shift in polling since then? So I just listened to a CNN podcast with John Delavope, who's the director of polling at the Harvard Kennedy Poll Institute that I was just talking about earlier. And he said that people were really confident or younger Republicans were really confident when it was Trump versus Biden. They saw Trump as more of a stronger candidate compared to Biden. But ever since the dropout, their confidence has plummeted quite a bit just because of the rallying that we've seen and the positivity around Kamala Harris. Um, so he said that younger Republicans went from 66% uh, confidence to 60% now. Uh, so that's a 14 point gap because Democrats are now uh, 74% say they are positive and uh, about Harris's election or being the Democratic uh, candidate. For the record, uh, for the listeners at home, the three of us sitting here are all Gen Zers, as you know, as one is. Um, but so, you know, as this election is going on, and you know, ta- especially now, first day of October, talks are starting to ramp up, you know, as we're almost one month away, which is crazy to think about. I mean, what are some of the things, you know, you're kind of hearing on the town that people are kind of saying about this election? Do you want to start because you talked on the street? <laughs> yeah, I talked yeah, to more older people, so yeah, we got um, two different perspectives. Yeah, I'll start with it. Um, obviously, so a lot of the students I talked to, they all really started off talking to me kind of like silent and not really sure even what they were going to say. And I think part of that is because a lot of things that you say now about the election are you almost looked at as like a bad person if you agree with one idea or the other, or people are going to look at you and try to argue with you. And I think people get a lot of anxiety about that now, especially with social media and people getting filmed on TikTok and stuff everywhere. And another thing I'm hearing around the street is a lot of people don't even want to vote at all because they think that the election's rigged because of what Trump said in 2020 and what happened on January 6th. And they think that no matter what they vote for, that their vote's not really going to count or it's not going to be counted correctly. That's not everybody, but that's also a thing going around the street. And also another thing that I'm hearing from a lot of my friends and a lot of their friends like walking around the street or just hearing a lot of talk is a lot of people want to vote for the third party because they think that if they vote for the third party, then that's going to kind of create a shift in the coming years about having more than a two-party system in our country, which has kind of been not favorable in Gen Z. As Is you this might see. even after RFK endorsed President Trump? I would absolutely say yes, especially since he's still on the ballot in a couple states too. And also I've heard a lot of talk too about people wishing RFK stayed in the debate because again, going back to all the events that keep happening and all the crazy things that keep happening every month, people think that a couple of things could have happened where RFK could have responded in a way through social media where he would have gained a big chunk of voters that he could have swayed um, the people in the country. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, what I've heard is just, it's been a little bit of a, I don't wanna say a sense of relief, but especially when, you know, Biden decided he was gonna drop out Especially when he announced that he had COVID, people were like, all right, this is this is the time when it's going to happen. And also, I want to mention um, some of the other policies that we didn't talk about that are major in its upcoming election is um, immigration issues. um, The economy cost of living are also really, really big ones that um, the Trump campaign uh, told The Hill that they see an opportunity to capitalize with Gen Z voters. And again, as we see this, the Ukraine war is still happening and all these other um, that we are sending money to right now um so as this these stories and these wars keep developing that is constantly changing gen z's decisions and factors when they are going to vote yeah and i feel like you know the things a lot especially in gen z that you're hearing is when um it was announced kamala was running was that oh there can be somebody that's not you know 70 80 years old like it felt like everyone not even if you're you know choosing to vote for kamala or not 
but that you know it was a little bit of like a breath of fresh air that it was a younger candidate someone that you know you're not gonna think maybe is gonna fall over every five seconds or something like it yes. just felt like the entire country whether you're again whether you're voting for her or not like just kind of took a breath of fresh air like you know maybe this is the start of we're turning towards not obviously like a right away coming out when as soon as you're eligible to run for president and doing it but you know it is you know younger Yes, I've seen a lot of people online and during my internship this summer in Washington, D.C., a lot of people say there's a cap on what age you can be to run for president, but there should also be one when you are not allowed to run for president because you are too old, too young and too old should have an age cap. And that's something that they have considered after um, the Bi B Joe Biden dropped out of the presidential race, considering putting a bill through the House um, addressing that concern. Well, also the fact that younger people are learning a lot faster from seeing all this information constantly on their phones. There probably should be a younger age to be able to get into office. And actually, from my interviews I conducted on the street, I asked them, how do you guys think that we can get someone running for president that's a little bit younger or more willing to see the younger people's issues? And they actually said that maybe an influencer in the future could be someone who's able to reach out to younger voters and get an audience. And that really makes sense, especially since you've seen all these presidents going on podcasts and really getting a lot of attention from them. Also, J.D. Vance. Um, um, the um, Donald Trump's vice presidential candidate, he also has a very, very um, small experience in the political world. He graduated from Yale, and it's only his second year in the political world, um, you know, first year in the Senate, and he is somebody who is representing under uh, former President Donald Trump, too. Yeah, and that is all the information that we have for you today. I want to thank you, Reese Soli, for joining me today to talk about Gen Z and the upcoming election. Thank you. Now, next week, I'm going to be anchoring Gen Z Up to the Ballot, the news magazine show, where we're going to talk about more about Gen Z, the election, much more. You're going to see two stories. They were mentioned um, by Soli and Reese. Reese, I'm going to start with you. Give me a quick, you know, one-liner tease for your show or for your um, for your segment. Mm. It's so hard because I learned so much from a lot of them, but I would say, come back to me on that. Okay, absolutely. Well, honestly, I don't know if I really have a, head, a headline either for that, but I can kind of give you a good idea of what is going to happen in mine. Mine, you're really going to see what the talk on the street is and really what everyone's just thinking, but maybe not saying quite right now. You're going to see opinions about climate change. You're going to see one student talk about what his general opinions on the election are and even um, just what, yeah, just basically what their general opinions are in, in the election and what the talk on the street is like here on, um, on campus. For mine, I'd say... Why do older generations hesitate to share the power torch with young voters? That's one question I answered. And the other is, what ways do older generations connect or resonate with younger voters? Awesome. Love it. You are not going to want to miss either of those right there. Looking at, you know, those issues that you just mentioned. Love it. And don't forget to tune in tonight to the vice presidential debate between Tim Walls and J.D. Vance. But until then, remember that while we provide you with facts and opinions, at the end of the day, it is up to you to decide. Thank you for listening and have a great night.